Imagine being diagnosed with a rare form of cancer that had metastasized to the rest of your body and you were given three months to live. You know, you have to think at that point, well, are things like my will up to date? You start even thinking of planning your funeral. But what if your cure was hiding in plain sight and was tucked away in a medical journal waiting for someone to find it? This is Michael's story. In January of 2016, started feeling sick, thought that maybe I was coming down with the flu. After a couple of weeks of uh, getting worse and worse, called my primary care, and I had a PET scan five days later. The hospital, I logged into the computer, pulled up my images, and promptly fainted. I woke up on the floor in the radiology department with two radiologists and an emergency room nurse above me, saying, we gotta get you to the emergency room immediately. To what I replied, why? Have you seen my PET scan? I need a biopsy. As the doctors ran more tests, they learned that he had a rare form of cancer called angiosarcoma that had spread to his liver and his bones. Angiosarcoma is an aggressive form of cancer that is known to metastasize and cause organ dysfunction as a consequence of its uncontrolled growth. So at the time that I was diagnosed, um, I had gotten quite weak and eventually got to the point where I had given up driving and then I couldn't even walk around the house without help. You know, you have to think at that point, well, are things like my will up to date? You know, when I die, you know, do I want to be cremated? Do I want to be buried? You start even thinking of planning your funeral. Michael first came to our center at Penn back in 2016. He had just been given a three month prognosis and he wanted something, anything that could save his life. So we went through the literature and we found there was a study that was done back in 2013 suggesting there was increased PDL1 expression in his type of tumor, angiosarcoma, but no one had done anything with it. PDL1 is a molecule on the surface of cells that tells the body's immune system not to attack. It's a way of avoiding friendly fire. In cancer patients, PDL1 is also a way that the cancer cell hides from the body's immune system. It can evade immune response by putting up this don't eat me sign. So I went to his doctor and I suggested that we test his tumor for PDL1 expression. If it was elevated, maybe he could benefit from a PD1 inhibitor. But his doctor told me there was no data that existed on PD1 inhibition for any form of sarcoma, let alone angiosarcoma, and he would not run the test. We figured out another path to get the test done, and it came back blazingly positive, suggesting that a PD1 inhibitor may actually be really effective in treating Michael's disease. I got the uh, Keytruda on a Friday morning. And then I woke up on Monday morning pain-free, feeling better. But with that one dose, I knew that I might see another birthday. So at the time he was treated, PDL1 inhibitors were not widely known to work in his kind of cancer. After I got better, I'm getting treated in Raleigh. And within a couple months of starting treatment, I'm out there playing golf. Not, not very well, but at least... But, you know, and I'm, I'm driving again. And we did a follow-up PET scan in Raleigh, and I had no evidence of disease. So Michael became the first patient that we're aware of to be treated with a PD-1 inhibitor for angiosarcoma. It's now been used so many times in other patients that it is considered standard of care, and it's recommended by the National Comprehensive Cancer Network. I've been in remission now for seven years. Michael's story is so important because it identifies the fact that there are papers that are published that show a drug can be useful in a new disease and can actually save lives, but no one is utilizing that information. I mean, th this thing can come back, but I've really had, you know, seven years more than I thought that I would because at the time of my initial diagnosis, we were thinking of my life expectancy in terms of months. So at Every Cure, we are using artificial intelligence to scrape all of the world's medical literature to put it into a centralized database, combine it with other data sets and expert insights, and use it to develop a new algorithm that helps prioritize the potential for every drug to treat every disease. That means that no paper containing life-saving insights will ever be overlooked again. And that's gonna be the future of oncology in my opinion.